I have our publication here, Aiden Abet Police Military Newsletter, and I want to share something with you here. I have a uh, good buddy at one time, J. Edgar Hoover, director of the FBI. He was not a homosexual like they say. That was a lie that they built up to discredit him. Here's what he said 40 years ago. He said the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous that he cannot believe it even exists. And that's the problem we have today. This conspiracy is so monstrous, so demonic, that we tell people about it and they say, you're crazy, this is America, it can't happen here. So J. Edgar Hoover said that, that it was a conspiracy so monstrous that people don't even believe it exists. And that's the problem we have today, folks, is doing that, convincing people that this conspiracy is real. I that uh, there are red and blue lists out there of you already heard about the red and blue list, okay? And some people are calling my radio talk show on Genesis Communication Network and on the Great Republic Broadcasting Network. And uh, praise God, we got uh, the owner of Republic Broadcasting Network. I think he's going to speak right after me, John, a wonderful patriotic American. But anyway, I've had people calling me saying they go out to their mailbox and they find a little red dot or a little blue dot on their mailbox and they wonder what the little red dot and blue dot is. Well, it's marking your mailbox by the government so when foreign troops come in here on us after martial law, if you have a red dot on your mailbox, they take you out immediately and shoot you right in the head. But if you have a blue dot, they take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now to house 50 million Americans. They're building enough concentration camps in America by Halliburton that Cheney's getting rich off of, Vice President Cheney's getting rich off of, to put those with the blue dot on your mailbox in those concentration camps. Now, if you go out and you find a pink dot on your mailbox, that means that they believe you'll be a good slave and you're going to go along with the program and serve our international antichrist masters. So watch for that dot. They haven't got up to our area It's yet. time to prepare, folks. It's time to prepare. It's time to work, 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 work like we're going to win, which we are. But it's also time to prepare like you may lose temporarily. So I'm going to tell all of you, if you have not bought ammunition, if you have not bought guns, go get them now. Go get them now, because you won't be able to get them much longer. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got uh, we got uh, Bush and Cheney and Osama bin Laden in the Carlisle group together, and guess what they're doing? They're buying up all the American ammunition companies that make uh, ammo in America. The Carlisle group's brought, uh, buying them up so that you and I can't get any ammunition. So go out and get your ammunition now and get your weapons now before you can't get them anymore, folks. Things are moving very rapidly. Now, we're either going to win it soon or we're going to lose it soon, either one. But I think we're going to win it. Don't you agree? Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I've got to get down from here, but I want to leave you with one of my most favorite quotes from Samuel Adams. And you probably heard this one and remember it. He said, if you love wealth better than liberty and tranquility of servitude better than animated context of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or your arms. Crouch down and lick the hands and the feet of those that feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you were ever our countrymen. Hallelujah.
<laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Crazy! Are we going to war? not ending. Now I'm kicked back in my FEMA camp cell. They told me this would happen, but I told them all to go to hell. Now we stand in toe to line, waiting on that dinner bell. Re-education on the speakers makes me want to scream and yell. Never seen it coming because the process was so gradual. The mainstream called it nonsense, but I now realize it was factual. The Patriot Act, the NDAA, everybody thought was natural. We should have organized this neighborhood and been more tactical. TSA acting like Al-Qaeda is in my underwear. Radiated by naked body scanners, man, and I don't care. Just keep me safe from terrorism when I'm flying through the air. Because Uncle Sam is warm and fuzzy, just like a teddy bear. Aww. All my family dead, and I feel like I'm the next to go. I'm sitting on the floor of my cell, and I'm feeling freezing cold. Now I shake and shiver, and I ask God where I go wrong. He said you should have killed your television and smashed your radio. I didn't notice it getting so bad. When did this all happen? Half were protesting Chick-fil-A, and the other half were napping. Obama announces he'll bypass Congress and the crowd was actually clapping. We have a history of killing our own people and blaming it on a patsy. I was busy blazing blunts and busting rhymes in the kitchen. Thought my biggest problem was my Xbox 360 glitching. I didn't notice that my freedoms were steadily slipping. Should have been buying more guns and stockpiling ammunition. I remember when they loaded us up and rolled us to the FEMA camp. I guess this is the hope and change that Obama was talking about. Now I'm a prisoner in my homeland and all I want to do is get out. There's only one way to escape this hell and this guard's about to show me how.